Hey, Big V here, Verl Workman here. Today we're talking teams and we're gonna focus on how to make money with your money. So now you're in real estate, you've built your team, you've got revenue coming in. So how do you make money with your money? One of the biggest challenges we have as we start making more money in real estate is we have a tendency to live a more extravagant lifestyle. When's the last time you actually bought a car and made money on it? Yeah, think about that. We buy nice things, we drive nice cars, and we wear nice clothes, but none of those things give us a return on that investment. So how do we invest with our money so that we can have a greater return? I will tell you that my rule of thumb that we use in investing in real estate is simply this. Whatever you spend your money on, you should get a 6x return. So if you can't get a 6x return on it, it's an expense, not a profit center. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give you our lead conversion strategy called the ABCs of lead conversion that will teach you how to get a higher level of return on the dollar you spend on lead generation. As we get into this and we talk about making money on your money, I'm gonna first give you my first piece of advice that I wish somebody would've given me when I was new in real estate, and that's simply this. As a real estate agent, you're in the business of helping other people create wealth with real estate. And so you help them buy homes, and then they build equity, and then they sell their home, and they upgrade into the next house, they build more equity. If they do it smart, they continue to move into properties where they have more and increased equity. But yet you as a real estate agent focused on helping other people build equity, but you don't do it yourself. So my first piece of advice is be your own best client. The greatest thing you can do as a real estate agent is to pay attention to the opportunities that exist in the marketplace. If you give the advice to a client that that's a really good deal and they should buy it and they don't and neither do you, should they have really bought it? Think about that. So if you're gonna give the advice, take your own advice and put yourself in a position to buy. There are so many ways of generating revenue and finding money to be able to buy real estate if you know how to identify the right deals. So number one in how to make money with your money is make sure that your own best client. All of the things that you've ever invested in in your life, unless you were lucky and got involved with Amazon or Google or Apple in the early stages, I'm telling you, it's really difficult to make money in other people's businesses. You should invest where you know the marketplace. Whenever I put money into somebody else's business, it's a 50-50 or less chance that I've made money with it. But when I've invested in my own business or in my own real estate where I can control the outcome, the outcome is always much more likely. So be your own best client. So number, step number one is invest in real estate. Number two is help your team members invest in real estate. Your financial responsibility to the people in your life is to help them create wealth. Most real estate agents end up retiring and they have nothing except the house they lived in. As a team leader, as a broker owner, if you really help your people invest in real estate, buy a property every year, one every two years, and they start building a portfolio of real estate properties that they hold and they lease and they rent that makes some money, what happens when they retire is they retire retire wealthy instead of broke like most realtors. The next is when we do lead generation, and this is making money on your money, if I spend $500 on a lead generation source, whether it's Sync or Boomtown or Zillow or whatever, and I'm investing in it, the leads come in, most of the time we respond with, oh, these leads aren't any good. The problem is that you don't understand the value of the lead that comes in. You see, most leads don't convert on the first, second, or third communication. It's usually between the seventh and twelfth touch that a lead responds. And most leads are converted after the seventh to 12th touch. Most agents stop following up after the second attempt. And so the majority of your leads don't convert. So you don't get a return on your investment because you don't have a systematic proven method for lead conversion. Would you like one? All right, I'm going to give it to you. At the end, I'm going to have you download the whole system, but here's how it works. When a lead comes in, you first have to change your attitude towards leads. Are you ready? Write this down on your forehead. Put it on your mirror. There are no bad leads. There are no bad leads. Only people who aren't ready yet. And if you look at every individual as a human that deserves home ownership and that you will work with them whenever they're ready and you don't try and make them buy when they're not ready or make them sell when they're not ready, it's just a relationship you're gonna focus on. There are no bad leads. Only people who aren't ready yet. And now I'm gonna systematically follow up with that leads until they buy or tell me to die. I want you to follow up with those leads until they file a restraining order. I want you to stay at the front of their mind so at any moment that client wants to buy or sell real estate, they think of you first. Are you ready? Okay, we call this simply the A, B's, and C's of lead conversion. An A lead is simply identified as someone that you have an appointment with who is likely to buy or sell in the next 30 days. So in the next 30 days, they're a highly qualified lead that's gonna buy or sell and you have a scheduled appointment. So if I come to my team and I say, okay, it's Monday morning, our time for our Monday huddle, how many A leads do you have? And they open up their calendar and say, oh, I've got four A leads. And you say, great, show me four appointments. When agent says, oh, I got 50 A leads, I say, bull crap, show me your calendar. And I look at their 50, if they don't have 50 scheduled, 
they don't know that what an A-lead is. An A-lead is not someone who might buy or sell. An A-lead is someone who might buy or sell that you have a what? An appointment. A stands for what? Appointment. What does A stand for? It's an appointment. Someone who's ready to buy or sell in the next three days you have a scheduled appointment with. A B-lead is somebody who is 30, to 90 days out. The client that's 30 to 90 days out, we're gonna call them twice a month. We're gonna call them during the months of the first and the month that the 15th falls in of every single month. They always fall in different weeks. So B leads are 30 to 90 days out. We're gonna call them during the weeks of the first and the 15th and we're gonna have great dialogue. Hey, this is Verl. I'm just calling to make sure I'm not dropping the ball. I wanna make sure I'm staying in touch with you. Are you getting the properties I'm sending? Is there anything you want me to do with the change of the search? By the way, how's your family? What are the kids up to? What's new with your job? The goal is to take a B lead, develop a relationship, we call that building relationships with trust, and then convert them into what? An appointment. An appointment to meet with the lender to get qualified. An appointment to meet with me to meet in my office to talk about a buyer a listing agreement. At an A lead, somebody you have an appointment with, a B lead, 30 to 90 days. We're going to call them twice a month during the weeks of the 1st to the 15th. And a C lead is 90 days out or longer. And we're simply going to put them on a follow-up plan where we call them once a month during the week of the 8th. The week that the 8th falls in, we call our C leads. And I say to my C lead the same thing I say to my B lead. I want to give them something of value. I want to just touch base with them. I want to see if they're getting the information. Is there something here, something you could use maybe to challenge your taxes or to improve your property or things you could do to increase the value of your home? By giving them real value without trying to push them or move them forward, it keeps me at the front of their mind. It opens up to ongoing communication. I give them general data about what's going on in the marketplace to keep them informed and also to position myself as a true expert in real estate. We call C leads once a month, B leads twice a month, A leads. We don't have to call them any because we have an appointment with them. We are the follow-up system. Real estate estate lead conversion is one of the greatest way to get the highest return on the money that you make in real estate. If you're not getting a 6x return on your sink or your boomtown or your Zillow leads, look instead of at the lead source, look at the lead conversion, the follow-up process and ask yourself, are we following the system that Verl just outlined? If you're not, just do it my way. Do it my way for the next six months and see if your conversion rate goes from zero to two percent or from two to three percent. We have agents doing very high levels of conversion because they follow a proven system. So in Invest in the things that you can control. I love real estate because there's so many ways of generating leads. If you invest in things that give you a 6X, do you understand that when you get a 6X return, you can build any size of any team you want to because you know it's predictable. If I spend $1,000 on this lead source, I get a certain number of leads, we convert 6X. So if I want six times the volume, I do six times the investment because it's proven we're able to do it over and over and over again. That's how we scale and that's how we grow so many seven-figure teams. So invest in real estate, invest in lead generation, but more importantly, focus on the conversion numbers and follow the proven system. Start businesses that are complementary to the business you're in. We have so many team leaders that run a property management division. My first goal with a team leader that says, I want to be in property management, I said, okay, let's build a business plan for it. And with the goal of property management should cover all of your fixed overhead. So can you generate enough revenue in property management to cover all of the fixed overhead in your business? And then of course, if you really want to get a high return on investment, I would say invest in yourself. Invest in the things that you can control that get a predictable outcome ongoing education, becoming experts in other areas of business, and then applying that knowledge, putting it to work to get a return on that education is huge. So there's so many ways of getting a return on your investment. The key is learn how to create leverage so that your money makes money for you. When your money's working for you, that means you're not working as hard. I learned a long time ago that those who are wealthy collect interest. Those who have no money pay it. So don't be a borrower of money be a lender of money. Invest your money to get a high return. Download the ABCs of lead conversion. Check out our key partners like Sync and let's figure out how you can get the highest return on your money. Real estate is a fun business. Be your best client and let's create some real wealth together.